9.15 a.m. on Christmas Eve, we received a flood warning call from the Environment Agency telling us that the River Mole would burst its banks within 30 minutes. This was the first warning we had that the threat to the airport's operations was from severe flooding as well as high winds. This obviously requires a very different sort of contingency planning. Overnight, the rainfall had been at 68 millimetres, significantly exceeding the Met Office forecasts, causing the worst flooding in the airport's living memory. <coughs> flooding on this scale has not been seen at the airport since 1967. The river did burst its banks, and three airfield substations flooded, and the runway instrument landing system was disabled. The standby power generators were activated, and the airfield continued to operate. With Christmas in mind and the imperative to get passengers to their destination rather than cancel all flights from the North Terminal, the decision was taken jointly with our airline partners to move the vast majority of these flights to the South Terminal. This change of terminal is logistically very challenging at the best of times, and we will be reviewing with our airline partners whether we should ever attempt this complicated procedure again at, sh at such short notice and on such a scale. I think that, that, that there were two significant issues which made the Gatwick plan fail, and that is the movement of passengers within the airport um, was, was not managed well, and so very, very quickly the South Terminal um, filled up and they were very, very difficult for passengers, very difficult circumstances and conditions for passengers. But secondly, what we didn't know at 7.30 was that the amount of resource which was available to bus passengers back to North Terminal, where our planes were. So remember, we have 31 planes here, fully crewed, bags on them, ready to kind of get the passengers off. The busing resource, it became clear late in the afternoon, was simply not sufficient to transport that number of customers back to North Terminal, which is why all of a sudden South Terminal began to clog up. A very similar incident did happen on the 16th of October, uh, where as a result of flooding, we were asked to transfer our South Terminal operations to North Terminal. Not, not the same thing as North to South, but, but essentially the same sort of activity. And uh, Gatwick handled that uh, reasonably well. I think what's important for the committee um, to be made aware of is just the magnitude of the disruption, not only that was happening at Gatwick, but also in the broader region. Uh, you know, the River Mole that flooded its bank uh, actually runs through a culvert underneath the runway. The River Mole is the river that disrupted uh, many people's electricity supply right the way down the Mole Valley. It actually runs through the Gatwick site. If you step back, some of the things we were contending with was also the loss of power out <coughs> on the uh, airfield, the loss of the instrument landing system, the fact that the rail services weren't working to Brighton because of the disruption to rail, and then subsequently with the fire at East Croydon Station, the loss of rail services uh, up to Victoria, and in addition to that, the closure of the M23 due to flooding. I don't think we should lose sight of the fact that this was an enormous event that was much bigger than just the Gatwick site. We're very sorry for what happened on the Gatwick site on that day. We certainly tried our hardest, but this was an enormous event that was much bigger than Gatwick Airport, and I think we shouldn't oversimplify it to simply saying that this was an event just about trying to get passengers on buses from the South Terminal to the North Terminal.